Hello and welcome to my video. I am filming my birth story video. I wanted it to be more vlog style, but my labor and delivery was so fast. I wasn't able to do the kind of video that you typically see where people film themselves at home saying, I just felt a contraction, gonna take a shower, we're gonna mosey to the hospital, see if I should be admitted, that kind of thing. Mine was really fast, so I didn't have any time to think about filming, but I do have some clips and pictures and things that I can insert as I tell my story. I binge watched these videos prior to having my son who is eight weeks old who I'm looking at. He's here right here on the monitor. I'm looking at him right now so I may have to go get him but we'll see. They really helped me quite a bit just to kind of know what to expect in the hospital somewhat except for this is my first child and I had him early and I delivered him really really quickly which both of those things are atypical for first children but that's my story. I'm gonna just get right into my story. I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes at 27 weeks, which was actually really great because it kind of gave me a regimented diet. But if you're diagnosed with gestational diabetes, something that typically happens is you are more likely to have a premature birth and you're more likely to have a large baby. So doctors like to schedule an induction before your actual due date to make sure that the baby is okay. It's it's not too big for a vaginal delivery and all of those kinds of things. So I was scheduled for an induction, which was a surprise. I didn't know that. They should have told me much sooner. I found out like a week beforehand. My due date was June 3rd and I was scheduled for an induction on May 29th. And I was really kind of bummed about that. I've heard that inductions can cause a more painful labor, so therefore you're more likely to cave and get an epidural, and my plan was to have a natural birth. So I was kind of bummed about that, and so I started talking to my baby in my belly and telling him, you know, we're ready to meet you. If you want to come early on your own, please do. We would welcome it. We love you. I'll insert some clips of that. I did film that, so I'll insert some clips of that here. Hi baby boy. So I'm officially on maternity leave. I finished my last day of work yesterday. It's Saturday morning, May 23rd, 2020. You're due June 3rd. This is you in my belly. I'm huge. So I'm looking forward to meeting you. The doctors want to induce, and I'm hoping to avoid that. So let's work together. Let's go into neighbor, labor naturally. They want to induce on the 29th. Yeah, the how it looks messy. We just bought this house uh, because we knew we were gonna have you. We wanted to have we wanted to have a place for our family. Now that we're making one, we can't make, wait to meet you. Okay, baby boy, we've decided to go with the induction. With the gestational diabetes, we've decided that if there's any chance that it might be bad to wait much longer, we wanna get you out while you're healthy and have you in our arms. It's Tuesday, so the induction is Friday the 29th. Today is Tuesday the 26th of May. So if you wanna come a little early, like I said, you can go ahead, come on out. <laughs> Otherwise, we're gonna get you out and I'm gonna hold you. I love you, Dad. Daddy and I cannot wait to meet you. I think that you're getting ready. Grandma says you're ready. Okay, we love you. I'm working on deciding which bassinet you're gonna sleep in in our bedroom. This one has a mattress cover that we need to wash. This one's more like a portable one. And then this one's kind of an older co-sleeper. I don't really love either of them, but one of them will work and I have to decide which one it's gonna be. I think this one's cuter. So you're gonna sleep in here in our room with us. So I was scheduled for the induction on May 29th and on May 27th at 10 p.m. my husband and I are lying in bed, we're talking, and probably about 11 p.m., he's asleep. I'm still awake thinking about things because the induction's two days away, so my wheels are just turning. And I 
start to feel a really intense what felt like a period cramp and I thought okay if that's not a contraction then something is wrong and regardless I should go to the hospital and so I thought I'll see if I feel it again and that lasted maybe 15 seconds and then about five minutes later I felt another one and it was a little bit more intense and it probably lasted about the same amount of time so I got up I downloaded an app on my phone really quickly to count contractions I go to the living room Room. I'm pacing back and forth and I'm tracking my contractions and they're getting stronger and more frequent and they hadn't yet reached a minute but they were just within five minutes apart and they say go to the hospital based on the 511 rule which is if they are lasting for one minute they're five minutes apart and that happens for an hour and they were getting so intense so quickly mine were much less than five minutes apart they were probably about three minutes apart and they were lasting almost a minute so my phone told me not time to go to the hospital quite yet but I knew that I needed to go to the hospital so I came into the bedroom I woke my husband up at about 11 25 and I said finish packing we have to go to the hospital and he probably didn't realize at first I know he didn't realize at first that I really needed to urgently go to the hospital because I was in a lot of pain and how close together they were he was groggy he just woke up and he was thinking about the 5 one thing too that we had probably hours and that it was a leisurely stroll to the hospital which is what we were told it would be like and so he's going around packing and I'm screaming um, I'm still tracking my contractions on my phone and then my phone tells me go to the hospital <laughs> because they did get to be over a minute long within a few minutes apart. My phone's telling us go to the hospital. I'm screaming. My husband starts to frantically run around and, and finish up packing. I woke him up, up, up about 11.25. I mentioned I wanted a natural birth. I started screaming. In the, I was in the bathroom just leaning on things. I kept leaning over. Luckily, I had already packed, so I, all I had to do was throw on a dress and put some shoes on and I'm, I'm screaming, I want an epidural, I don't care, I want an epidural and we gotta get to the hospital. It was, it was so painful. And so we get into the truck about 11.45. So I woke him up 11.25, we get into the truck 11.45. It's a 20 minute drive to our hospital and I am just screaming in the truck the whole car ride. I'm holding on to the, what do they call it? The, oh, well, whatever, the handle where you hang your dry cleaning. I'm holding on to that handle. I'm leaning back, I'm screaming. One thing I really regret if you are watching this because you are about to give birth is I really wish I had practice breathing more with coronavirus. Care was really suboptimal and I wasn't able to go to any in-person birthing classes. I Everything was like YouTube that I learned about and I did watch some breathing videos but in the moment, in that pain, I didn't think about the breathing and my husband and I, we were watching birth classes on YouTube and we hadn't gotten to the breathing part. So my husband wasn't really well versed on the breathing yet. We thought we had more time. Anyway, so the hospital's a 20 minute drive. We left about 11.45 and I'm telling him, I will not be able to walk in. You need to go and find me a wheelchair. And so we park and I point to the ER. I say, go over there and get me a wheelchair. He runs over there. They won't give him one. They say he has to pull the truck up around. So he runs back and then we drive around up to the front of the ER. I get out and I think it might have even been a security guard. I don't know that it was hospital staff, hospital, hospital staff. I think it might have been a security guard. He has a wheelchair. I get in and I'm just screaming in the wheelchair. He's like, don't have this baby on me. Somebody is leading him. I think it's a nurse from the ER. Leads him up to labor and delivery, which is a little bit like a minute or two away. And I get there and there's a bunch of nurses. It's uh, 12.05 or so at this point, a.m., 12.05 a.m., maybe 12.10 a.m. at this point. A bunch of nurses are just at the nurse's station. I, th I think they might have been having a little bit of a slow night, luckily, because they were a bunch of them were right there and ready. And I they take me straight to a room. Luckily, one was right away available. And they start changing me. I'm screaming. I can barely get into my hospital gown. And one nurse looks at the rest of the nurses and says, I think that we should keep her <laughs> because usually they determine whether or not they can keep you say if you're not dilated enough they will say go home labor some more at home and then come back when they're the contractions are closer together and longer and with coronavirus my husband couldn't come up with me right away they, your husband can't come up or your partner can't come up with you until they determine if 
they are going to keep you in, during coronavirus. Usually they can come up with you, it's no problem. So right then when the nurse said, I think we should keep her, I said, can I call my husband and, and tell him to come up? They said, yes. Yeah. So somehow I'm able to dial him on the phone. I think they may have already called him and he showed up within seconds. So I think they already had called him. I was a little bit out of it in pain, but I believe so. And he, when he showed up, it felt so much better. But he shows up and he walks in. And so my husband's there. It's just the two of us no one else uh, well and then the hospital staff and then they get me all linked up to machines and everything and I'm asking them drugs can I get drugs and I'd only been in labor just over an hour and they had checked me to see how dilated I was and I was at nine centimeters <laughs> we just barely made it I was at nine centimeters and they said it's too late and I said what about narcotics that it's too late, but which I didn't want those things. I wanted to have a natural birth. I went into active labor just hardcore right away to the point where a lot of women do kind of in that state of mind when it's too late are saying, I want drugs because it's just so intense. And this isn't to scare you. It is actually, you know, a really incredible experience as intense as it was. I do wish, like I said, that I had practiced my breathing more. There telling me no you can't have drugs your baby's on its way it's coming and so I said I want to push and one nurse was just like go ahead you're ready I was at zero station the baby was engaged uh, the whole time my baby's head was down he was in an excellent position too so this helped the labor go really quickly I think so I started pushing a little bit and then they told me okay now hold him there what I can't he's, he's coming I can't just hold him there and then one nurse did help coach my breathing and she said quick breaths like you're blowing out a candle and so I started to do that and I was actually able to hold in there and the pain did become much more bearable. So definitely, definitely practice your breathing. Practice your breathing. I am, that's the one thing I'm gonna do for my next child is practice my breathing more, which my next child is probably gonna come in 20 minutes based on how quickly this child came. So the doctor comes in and I'm already starting to push and then we're really pushing now. And my husband's holding my legs back. My husband did take some really raw footage of the delivery and it's like really raw really personal it's like I'm not even gonna show my mother kind of raw it's amazing I'm so glad that he and I have it I watch it and it's just so surreal so while I was pushing the doctor said hold on hold him there let him stretch you and again I was just like this baby is coming I cannot hold him I am not that good at this maybe if I were better at this I could I couldn't hold him and then she said okay let me come Cut you you're gonna tear and then I said I can't wait for you to cut me I'm just gonna have to tear and I'm pushing and pushing and once he was there and I had that final push it was just like boof and he came out and there was a crying baby in the doctor's arms and she hands him to the nurses because the nurses do the thing where they wipe him down my husband cuts the umbilical cord and he's on me skin to skin after that which was just incredible and after pushing I had burst blood vessels in my eyes and actually on my eyelids I saw some burst blood vessels I didn't feel like I pushed that hard but I guess I did really your body just takes over and it does know what to do so I gave birth to my son in less than two hours we barely made it to the hospital and by 12 58 a.m. on May 28th there was a baby in my arms and then while I'm holding him and my husband and I are just marveling they give me an intramuscular dose of pitocin in my leg which I didn't expect and then the doctor told me oh can you push for me and I said oh can I push and that's when you deliver the placenta so I delivered the placenta painless just kind of feels like something squishy comes out of you and then she had to sew me up I had second degree tearing and that is when you tear from your vagina down into the perineum just a little bit or a lot <laughs> third degree is where you tear all the way to your anus but I had second degree which is the most common kind of tearing it took her a good I want to say 15 minutes to sew me up and so she gave me some lidocaine as she was doing it and every time it hurt or I felt it she just gave me a little bit more lidocaine and I was 
sewn up and then they want you to get up to see if you can walk and see if you can pee so I got up and I felt like I had been punched in my stomach and and the wind was knocked out of me that's the best way I can describe it so I couldn't walk when I had to get a wheelchair to go from the bed to the bathroom which was like five feet away and so I go to the bathroom and it is bloody it's bloody just FYI your body kind of takes over and as you're in labor all kinds of endorphins are released to help with the pain but it is an amazing and crazy experience so I went to the bathroom the nurse she cleaned me all up with water I got into the wheelchair and I was freezing for some reason and she wrapped me in two blankets they handed me my son Ian Marcus and he was eight pounds four ounces 19 0.7 inches and we go to the postpartum ward I guess you could call it the room where my husband and I were gonna stay for another 24 hours in coronavirus they're keeping people for 18 hours but they did 24 for me because I had gestational diabetes they needed to test my son for hypoglycemia for a full 24 hours so he stayed for 24 hours after he was born so he was scheduled for an induction on May 29th I asked him to come early in those clips that you saw and and he came on May 28th so he listened to mom <laughs> so I mentioned that I wished I'd practice breathing more and I do one thing that I did remember in the moment was tips on pushing I had found this youtuber she's amazing she's really young she looks like she could be 20 her name's Bridget Taylor and she's a doula in the San Francisco Bay Area that's what she always says in the intros to her videos but she really knows what she's talking about and you know how when you see somebody at work and it just seems seems like that was their calling what they're doing was their calling they're just such a natural at it she's a natural and I will binge watched her videos and I will link her channel in the description box below definitely check her out if you're looking just for tips and reassurance and instructions on how to have a child especially right now when do doctors and hospitals are really minimizing care just down to what's really really urgent I got seen by an MD twice right before the show down. I didn't get seen in person by an MD at all afterward and I saw my nurse midwife once in person after that. They really cut it down so it was really hard to feel comforted and informed during this time but I was really blessed. I wanted a natural labor. I got it even though I was screaming for drugs and it was very short. It was funny the nurse was telling my husband you're gonna need to learn to deliver a baby if your first baby came this fast. I don't know what we're gonna do. So now that I reflect back on that day to see what kinds of signs of labor I might have had earlier, I did have some suspicions in the morning when I would go to the bathroom and I would wipe that kind of pink tinge on the toilet paper. I did feel a little bit of pain in my lower back. So those were two signs that I might have been in labor. I also had a non-stress test appointment, which is a test that they give to women who are high risk pregnancies. I was getting non-stress tests because I had gestational diabetes and I was taking insulin in the evening to regulate my fasting blood sugar and so because of the introduction of a medication they wanted me to take the non-stress tests and so I figured okay well I have that this afternoon I'll just go and and see how everything looks this afternoon but I went to my appointment for my non-stress test I asked her am I in labor and she said you have uterine irritability and she showed me the little graph on the chart that reads out what's going on with your uterus to see if you're having contractions and it just had little blips so she said you have uterine irritability and I said what does that mean and she said it's like a pre-labor and I said so how long till labor she said within a few days well uh, apparently I should have asked to be checked by an MD but I believed her I mean I didn't feel like I was in labor. I wasn't feeling any contractions, but I certainly had them later that night. And my husband and I are just blown away. Let me know if you want to hear more about motherhood and how it's going in the comments below. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye!